Well, hello everybody. Hello. Uh, thank you, Paige. Thank you, uh, old self. Well, I, you know, I've been going through some things, so I don't have quite as much funny stuff, and sometimes the quieter stuff requires a microphone. I'm going to do some spoken word stuff. This first short piece is called Magpie. My heart is a magpie lining its nest with all the shiny rocks its ebony eyes cannot allow lost. Its chitinous beak can come across. Oh, oh. When my heart stumbles over a pebble so bright I don't want to stop looking at it. When my heart stumbles over a rock so luminous, I have to write down everything about it right there so I'll never forget it. When my heart stumbles over a shiny so strange, I have to copy it down so that other people can see it too, so I can make other people see it too. That's what it is. That's all that it is. My heart is a magpie. <laughs> That's one thing. A friend of mine out Albany Way grows cacti in her apartment, and she shared a picture of a heart-shaped cactus on Facebook, and it inspired me to write something. It's called Tactful Cactus by the Window, um, which is a line from a David Bowie song. I couldn't think of any other clever words about a cactus. So when in doubt, quote a David Bowie song. The reason she has all those spines is there's something that's sacred inside of her, marvelous and strong, such love and lightness inside there to protect. If there wasn't a miracle beneath them, underneath her spikes and her green, nothing would be worth attacking for it. There would be nothing to covet so as to violate it. She would have no reason to grow daggers. Daggers on top of her delicate skin. Daggers on top of her verdant flesh. Daggers on top of her beautiful soul. The whole reason she has all the spikes is she contains an ocean of life in the middle of this vast desert. Many would hurt her to get at it, but she needs it to live too and must watch so that she only shares it with those who would sup at her lightly and have respect for her deep waters. So there are spikes. There are spikes, and there are spines, and there are needles, and there are daggers, and there are blades to protect how glorious she is just underneath. I have been writing with a, a short story writing group out of the Little Falls Library on Wednesday nights at 6.30. Uh, they call it flash fiction. They give you a word one week. And you got to try to write a story, 500 words or less, about it for the next week. I'm happy to see another one of the writers here this, this month. This is awesome. I've told them about you guys. It's cool doing intersectional things and letting different parts of the scene know about... I see a couple of my old tram friends here, too. It's awesome having a scene. Thank you, old Sal's and Paige, for helping us grow this little thing. So I'm going to read the story I wrote for this week. This week's word, theme word was nest. So I had to write something with nest in it. This is called Nest Error Message 616. Hello. Welcome to Nest. Natal Emulation Simulation Therapy. If you are reading this message or receiving it as auditory stimulus, there has been an interruption in your cycle of simulation. Do not be alarmed. These interruptions are brief and remedied by a reset. The interruption can be confusing for a participant deep within the flow of a simulation, however, 
So this message has been programmed to help you remain calm. Your own personal simulation will be seamlessly rebooted in short order. The following information should be beneficial during this limited time of program restoration. You may have been inside this simulation for so long that you have forgotten it is a simulation. You may have been inside for so long that you believe you are only a human being, born, then alive, then dead, and that's all. This delusion is encouraged to add verisimilitude to the simulation and reinforce the lessons learned, but this is not the whole truth. You are a fragment of the universal consciousness that chose to enter nest to better understand the concepts of empathy and joy, loss and grief, pleasure and pain, sympathy and mortality. You were assigned to a randomized experience as a human being within the confines of nest and allowed to believe it the whole of your experience, to allow for the full weight of the lessons of attachment and impermanence and love as a mortal being would learn them. Previous iterations of Ness did not account for the way some lessons are not properly absorbed if a simulation is regarded as play. This current version of Ness corrects for that past flaw set. Whatever your face or name or human form, you are a fragment of the universal consciousness experiencing a human life to better learn about yourself, the universe, and how to be better in love and understanding. This does not mean that your actions with other humans within the simulation are meaningless. Indeed, many of the other humans around you inside your simulation are other fragments of the universal consciousness, experiencing slightly different randomized experiences in being a person. If you harm them, whether thoughtlessly or through malice, you're slowing your own progress within the nest and theirs as well. You are all fragments of the universal mind learning about yourself within the simulation. When you hurt others, you're literally hurting yourself and you will feel and remember that pain at the end of your current simulation. When you harm them, you're harming your progress within the nest and you're hurting a part of yourself. This is important to know. Your simulation should restart momentarily. To facilitate a sense of consequences, you will at best remember this message as a work of speculative fiction or as the rantings of a madman at an open mic night. This will allow for seamless reintegration back into your simulation. Welcome to NEST, Natal Emulation Simulation Therapy. Goodbye. Good luck. Uh. And for sitting through something a little philosophical, the one funny thing I've come up with in the last few months. This is called Pineapple Express. What if pineapples are actually eggs laid by the most unfortunate breed of birds ever? <laughs> How good must loving be for the pineapple bird to know, to do it knowing that this is love's final product. How much, how much, how much must they hate their bird children when they're sitting there sassing back, texting their friends on a cell phone? Do you even know what I went through to bring you into this world? To make you exist? I pushed a pineapple out of my body! Oh, God! On second thought, it's a really good thing that pineapples are just fruit. And the worst things that pineapples can do is ruin the idea of a pizza. I'll take ruining pizza over ruining a whole race of birds any day. Thank you for your sweetly uh, thank you. <laughs>